Good morning, magandang umaga, and welcome to today's episode of My PI Dream. Today is today is Saturday. Yes. Today, today is Saturday, and I believe it's build day two hundred and mm, two hundred and ninety nine. <laughs> I I think it's two hundred ninety nine. I'm really bad about this. I got to get better with my with my dates. But anyway, regardless of what day it is, uh, we are starting our construction here this morning. We have a lot of things going on this morning, but before we get started and I explain what we're going to be doing today, I want to introduce you to Kit over here. Hi, guys. <laughs> Kit, Kit is our, our tempered glass guy. All the, uh, the special, the customized woodwork that we have done for the doors and windows, other than what we had done from Four Link Q for all the uh, UPVC windows, all the wooden handcrafted stuff. Kit is the one who's supplying us with all of our tempered glass, and he can do he can do all he's doing all those special cutouts for you know the arches that we have going around our main door, and and our transoms and our our, our uh, side lights and everything like that. And you're local, you're local here. Yes, I'm a local. Here. And he's from Sabang. I'm Sabang. Yes, I'm from Sabang. Our shop located in Sabang. So whenever you got some requirements in glass, just contact me or contact James. <laughs> <laughs> and let me, I have a question for you. The, for, for the glass, when you do, do you come out and do you measure it your, yourself? Do you measure yes. all the, all? Every we measure it and it's, uh, then we have to, uh, uh, it depends on your design. So we come up with a good product. We have machines, uh, tempering machines, beveling machines. Uh, flat polishing machines in every uh, kinds of glasses. And and, and that's, that was the next question I was going to ask you about about different styles of glasses, uh, uh, especially with tinting and things like that. Do you have? Can yes, you do we have different? Also that one. different uh, like we have like all of ours for the UPVC, they're like bronze tinted and things like yes, that. Yes, we have uh, tint also. We can apply it in your uh, windows panels. We also have frost frost. Uh, stickers or something like that either you can also we also have a panels like a reflective one that built on a on a in a glass which uh, already uh, in a glass so we have a separate we have external tint and we have internal tint oh so, oh. so you have it all you have the yes, base, have base all all. Of, yes. so I, I i didn't expect to put him on the spot he wasn't ready for a little promo here this morning but it's good <laughs> i take i have to take the opportunity when i can uh to to when the vendors come and they go but well, we're going to get today started here just in, in just a minute well anyway kit i want to thank you i want to thank yeah. you and what i'll do is uh i i have I have Kit's information for his uh, for his glass enterprise that he has here uh, in Lipa, and what I'll do is I'll post it in the description block today. If you are looking for somebody to custom make your tempered glass that you have, and you probably also do not just tempered, you probably do standard glass. Yes, all of it, uh, all kinds of glass, all kinds of. I have to talk to you this morning before you, if you have just like one minute before oh, sure. before you take off. No problem. Uh, remember, remember the glass that we're looking for that's going to go around our stone wall. I was looking for a sourcing place for that. I'm going to talk with Kit here in just a minute. Well, let's go ahead and get today started. So without further delay, let's get today's video underway. Well, that just happened to be perfect timing this morning that our our tempered glass man kit came uh, to deliver the glass that we need to finish this portion right here and this store right here and i'm not sure if there's any other parts that but i think that's the main items that we needed to have completed uh, for our tempered glass solution and again it was perfect timing because just yesterday we made the call that we need the glass to cover up the LED light strip that goes around the stonework in the great room. And uh, I didn't even think, it did not even dawn on me that our, we have a glass man, which is uh, Kit and his company. So he took the measurements, he will go back, he will give me a quote. We 
Now, what Kit is going to do, he's going to provide us with some samples. He's going to provide us with some samples that will show us different ways that we can diffuse the light going out to our wall from the LED strip lighting. At the same time, covering it up the, the strip lighting so you do not see the unsightly strip itself. And at the same time, giving us the maximum amount of light that will provide the coverage, uh, the wash on the wall. So we'll take a look at those when he comes. On top of the glass that he's going to provide us with for the great room, he also did some measurements for the under counter glass that we need for the kitchen cabinets. Uh, remember the glass that we have for the kitchen cabinets, they weren't drilled properly. Uh, it was not a good uh, cut when they, uh, the, the installers came out. They didn't do any honing or sanding or polishing of the glass and his company does that. Uh, they will make sure they come out, they bring a piece of, uh, that is appropriately sized for the area that we need. It's thicker, it's safer, should look better, and they will also do the honing and the polishing so it's a perfect fit on there, so it looks factory finished. So we're going to get the quote on that as well, and we'll share all that information once all that comes in. So anyway, let's look and see what is being done this morning around the yard and around the house here at Little Feliz. <music> As you can see over my shoulder here, we have the bluegrass. Yes, the bluegrass. For those of, that, of you that have been waiting uh, to know what grass that we're using, we're going with the bluegrass. It's, it's sort of like a golf course kind of a grass. Uh, it's, it's very easy to maintain. It doesn't grow. You hardly ever need to do any type of cutting or anything. The only thing you have to do with the bluegrass, you have to make sure that you keep it watered. It's break time here. I just went over to my friend's house that has a house here that has a stairway that goes up to an observation deck similar to what we have right here. You need a safety rail up here. When I was up here this morning, I showed you where they dug a hole inside the wall. Uh, I wasn't really sure. I thought this was for the metal railing and not the handrail, but that was for the handrailing. And it's way, way, way too low. It's not even close to code or anything like that. I'm gonna look at code. Uh, I looked at my friend's hand railing and I'm looking at the hand railing here. And right now, what I'm going to a minimum of 105 centimeters uh, to the uh, top of the handrail for the observation deck. Had it been here and you were sleepwalking at night or something like that, you would just roll right over. So also for this corner from the handrail that's coming up to a post up here and then going across, we have to make a decision. Do we want to put one post right here? Do an L to one post right here? Or do two posts right here and make them connected together? So the two options that I'm looking at right now is doing a dual, a dual post right here with a small section inside. So we can have a T. I want a clean T that goes across here from a post here, but I don't like the width, the amount of air that we have for an L that would be here, which is basically handrail to handrail over. I don't really like that solution. Uh, so right now we're looking at a double post on the top and then we'll make a connection of the handrail into the wall over there. Well, it is after lunchtime right now and everything is starting to start back up again for the construction process. What I want to talk to you about right now is some of the uh, codes or possibly the way you're going to be installing your things like your guardrails 
which will go up there, or your post, and things like that. Now, it's up to you uh, how you have your house designed and built in the Philippines. Even though there is guidelines and they do have codes over here, what you're going to find is a lot of times the contractor doesn't follow the codes or they make up their own codes and rules. So you want to make sure that there's checks and balances. And I'll give you a case in point. A uh, case in point was these up here on this side for the guardrail. The international code for, for doing height for guardrails it's it's I believe it's 42 inches and I'm and I, I will do some research and I will post a uh, reference for that uh, I will post a OSHA reference and there's another reference that has to do with uh, international building codes or IBC or something like that and if I remember correctly I believe that I, th I think you have a tolerance that you can work with it doesn't have to be exactly 42 but that's the recommended it's 42 and is a plus or minus something like three inches and it also has to do with the, uh, the height that your uh, platform, like the height above ground where you're going to be. I believe if your height is above 30, it, it's almost mandatory that you have to have the higher guardrails. And if it's below 30 inches, and that was 30 inches, uh, I think you have a little bit more latitude. It could be a little bit lower. Also, let's talk a little bit about handrails for the stair, not for the platforms, not for the guardrail for the deck up there, but let's talk about for the, uh, the upward or the downward handrails that you're using on your stairs, which is what we're doing here. There's also code for that. Now, again, we are living in the Philippines. You don't have to go exactly to the code, but you should stay to code. Uh, nobody's going to inspect you here. So, uh, if you have no idea out of the blue, like some people do, uh, then you might want to look at code and you might want to look at some examples. So what I did today, I went over to my friend's house who lives uh, in the phase one. Remember, this is phase two. And I looked at his, his system. He's a big guy. He's one of the big guys we were talking about earlier uh, that you want to test your system to make sure it works right. Well, I think when they built his, they built his a little bit higher. Uh, for us, we are going 90 centimeters on our hand rule. And it's that 90 centimeters is just shy below 36 inches. And if you look at some of the references for code, 36 is the minimum. We are in the Philippines, and most of the folks around here are a little bit smaller than us in North America. So dropping it down by just maybe one centimeter is not going to make that much of a difference, but it might be more comfortable for somebody, say, the height of my, my wife, Ness. So uh, she will be a little bit more comfortable with it being down like that. Plus, it falls to right within the specifications of legal international code for handrails. All right, here's another tip on how we're doing the installation of our stair uh, post for our handrail system here. Now, uh, you do research, uh, you do a Google search, you look uh, on YouTube, and you look and you will find tons, uh, so much information about installing posts your uh, handrail post to wood. It's very easy. Lag bolts, it's so easy. Drill some holes, put some lag bolts inside there. But you look and see what it, for trying to put posts in concrete through tile on a concrete floor like we have right here. And uh, you're gonna have very few hits when you do a search mechanism on that. Try it and you'll see what I'm talking about. So anyway, what we've come up with, and it makes sense, it's, it's our way, of, our method of doing it. I don't know if it's the right way, but in my mind, through uh, my construction uh, thinking, uh, this is going to work for us. What we are doing here is we are cutting, we've already done it. You can't see it right now. This is nice and clean. This post is sitting right on top of the tile. But what you don't see, and when we pull this off, because we just have one inside here, this is just a holding pattern so that we can mark everything and later on we'll, we'll secure everything properly and I'll tell you how we're going to do that as well. Uh, but what we're doing here, underneath this, what we did is we basically trimmed off a piece, a section of the base inside here. And, and it works very similar to like if you go to the dentist and you have a crown, they're going to they're gonna cut a section off of your uh, tooth where the root is and then they're going to fit a, uh, they're going to fit the the, uh, the crown over that, that section and secure it. Well, this is the same thing that we're doing here. Uh, this has like, like the, in the very bottom of the, underneath this, it has uh, a section of wood. And we have underneath this, not the tile here, but we have a cutout in the tile, but it's about this far away from the edge on the inside. And it's going to, let's see if I can make a little 
tiny diagram here of what it kind of looks like. Sort of something like this right here, and then the post is going to fit down inside of there. That's what we have right there. Then, uh, what you'll do is you'll use some type of adhesive, some type of epoxy adhesive or liquid, uh, liquid nail. Or if it's deep enough and you can chip it out even deep enough, you can use concrete inside there as well. Then what you want to do is you want to secure it with the appropriate size lag bolts uh, from here uh, into whatever platform that you have behind it, uh, which we're using it into our mahogany. Remember, mahogany is a hardwood. When you drill your holes, the hole can't be too big, but it can't be too small, especially when you're working with hardwood. If you drill the hole too big, then your screw doesn't have anything to grip into and pull. If you do it too small, you stand a chance on splitting your wood from this side since you're so close to the edge right here. So we've already done the outside and it, it, it's fitting well. What will happen sometimes, uh, especially in the Philippines, they will try to give you one of these small lag bolts right here. Don't use the small stuff. So when you're selecting what size lag bolts you need to connect your post uh, to, to your, your stair or the wall, or whatever it's attaching to for security, don't choose a lag bolt that's too small. Don't choose something like a quarter inch like this one right here. What you want is at least, at least a 3 8 or a 7 16 a lag bolt. And make sure you put enough in there, like we're putting two in that section right here, uh, that will give you good adhesion. Also, secondarily, what you want to do, secondarily, is that a word? Anyway, any, to follow up to make it even better, you want to put a little bit of adhesive between this connection right here, between the step and, and also underneath uh, where you're setting your post in. Put some type of liquid nail or some type of adhesive inside there so you're secured and you know that you're not gonna have a wobbly uh, post as you're walking up your stairs. Big tip about sodding your yard when you first put down your grass. Do not underwater your grass. Uh, that is one of the main causes for uh, lawn failures and, and death of your grass, especially after you first put it in. Uh, for the first, uh, for the first probably I don't know. I don't know what the rule is I've put sod down before and I've been pretty successful But I know for like at least three weeks you you, you water it pretty heavily in the morning and in the, uh, in the evening never in the middle of the afternoon because it'll, it'll it, it the water just evaporates and it's just like when you water your yard you water your yard early in the morning and uh, not too late in the afternoon because you don't want the water setting up and causing root rot uh, for your for your newly uh, sodded yard. So th the type of grass that we're using here is called bluegrass. Remember in the Philippines you have four types of grass. You have uh, bluegrass like we have here, you have carabelle, you have frog grass, and you have Bermuda. And each uh, is dependent on what you're looking for for maintenance and for looks and for feel. There are advantages and disadvantages to each one of these grasses that you're going to be uh, that you're going to be selecting for your yard. Uh, I like the bluegrass. I like the bluegrass because it's like carpet to me. The only thing is with bluegrass is when you first put the sod down, it doesn't do like remember when we had the carabao grass up here, and it started growing. It started making stringers and it was growing wider and wider and it. It was just growing like crazy, and it will do that. And you, you don't even have to sod your entire yard with carabao because carabao acts like centipede grass in the U.S. or St. Augustine. It will string out, and you could do half of your yard in that, and it will propagate itself and fill up your yard with space. So you can save a lot of money for your, uh, your installation if you're willing to wait for the time. Now, with bluegrass, from what I understand, I haven't done it before, but I've done some reading and there's very little information, like the little bit of information for putting posts in concrete for your stairs in your house, there's very little information on bluegrass installation for siding. What you'll find is there's a lot of information about carabao. I'm trying to block from the wind that just picked up. There's plenty of information about uh, carabao, about frog grass, even Bermuda, but not so much about bluegrass. Now bluegrass, since it does not propagate like all the other grasses, remember I planted this one year ago. One year ago is this bluegrass right here. It will not move. It will it'll stay alive. It'll be beautiful, but it doesn't grow and expand. So when this grass right here is completed and you see all the spots, the way they're, they're putting it in and like 
big postage stamp little clumps inside here it will never grow together what you have to do is what's called overseeding uh, once this is done and then you you will have a little bit of a uh, light amount of topsoil on the top and then you have to sprinkle some uh, seed bluegrass seed along with this to fill it in over time it will become one lush lawn but it will never grow more than what you see right here without the overseeding Well, it is a little after 4.30. It's getting to be the end of the day and the end of the work week. I am going to do a wrap up right here because I have to go grocery shopping. And uh, that will be the end of our day after we get done with the grocery shopping. Uh, but before we go, I want to make sure we capture everything that was done today. So let's walk from the second floor. Let's start at the second floor, work our way down, and we'll see what got accomplished today on Saturday. Well, we're going to talk about the ground floor while we're up on the second floor because it's kind of breezy down there. I don't know if you see, and you know how the, the breeze wreaks havoc with the, Go, uh, the GoPro microphones on this camera. We are kind of protected because the wind is coming from that direction over there. And this little lanai right here, it is protecting us from some of the wind. Anyway, you can see the sod, how much sod got put down today. Uh... <laughs> I want his job. <laughs> well, that will, that will be my job tomorrow because two times a day, in the morning and in the uh, late afternoon after the sun has started to set, uh, you need to really water your yard, your newly sodded, sodded yard. And that's what I, I will be doing tomorrow because there'll be nobody here except for Ness and myself. So you can see how much, <laughs> and I have to tell you, I should bring you down there. Maybe if they're still working when I make it down there, I will show you. They're putting like postage sized pieces of the bluegrass down all over the place down there. And uh, after they put the, the grass down, then they put some, um, some, a little bit of topsoil over the top of it. And that helps with the, uh, the embedding of the roots. And if it were things like, uh, if it were things like uh, centipede, like what we have in the US or St. Augustine or things like, things, things like that, what, what that would also help, it would help propagate the, uh, the expansion of the root itself to grow and fill in all the spots. I don't think so much out here though for that. Let's look inside the master bedroom area here where they were working in the breakfast nook area and some of the woodwork that they're working on here. Cabinets, doing some of the finishing on the outside. Remember, we're gonna go white to pink to this over here one day. They finally got the edging. Remember, everybody keeps asking about when are they going to do the, the grinding of this one part of the wall? Well, they did it today. And uh, a, quick, a quick fix that they are doing now uh, the, is the putting on the skim coat, doing the sanding, and then we'll be back to what it will look like over here. And no, we are not in Germany. <laughs> I, uh, I, I like the music. I love Ger German oompa music, and that's what's going on over there. Inside this room, I want you to look at this. 
This is, uh, let's put some lights on so we can see a little bit better inside of here. Over here, they've been working, they've been jamming in this room. You can see now our base area for our pedestals and our vanity and uh, we'll have mirrors and the sinks will go there. They worked on that today. So finally, for the first time in ages, they started working. And I know somebody's gonna ask the question, James, they're putting up the posts in the stairwell. What about your tub? That bathtub needs to get up there. Well, that's what that big box is over there. Uh, sometime today, when I was out getting some screws or whatever it was, I was at the hardware place, they must have brought the, uh, that brought the tub up here. So the tub is now finally in its resting area on the second floor, but not its final resting area, because its final resting area is going to be here. And inside the shower, the mud deck is down. Uh, they are doing it very similar to the way we do it in the US. They're a little bit different than the way they did it before. They're not going to do mud deck at the same time that they're installing the uh, mosaic tile. They actually have it down. They've done their slope to our drain down there. And the next step, they are going to take the tile that is sitting over there in those boxes, which is the same tile that we used in the CR shower on the first floor, and they will be installing that. So, whew, we're finally getting to uh, getting some activity on a second floor CR area. We still don't have any of the tiles in yet. My builder still hasn't, uh, I don't even know if he's placed the order yet. He hasn't placed it, as far as I know. He might have, I don't know. It hasn't been delivered, that's all I can say. We don't have the tiles yet for this or for the CR on the first floor. I keep sending my builder emails and text messages. Where are our tiles? I have not received a response to any of those. So I hope he hasn't forgotten about us. Please, Mr. Builder, don't forget about us. Also, something that my, my uh, a carpenter asked me today when we're putting the railing in for this area, at first we were talking about centering it on this right here. And I'm like, no, that's not a good idea. What we're gonna do, we're not going to center. We're gonna give us a little bit more room here. So at the center of it's gonna be a little bit off. It's gonna be out around this area right here, which is more appropriate uh, for the, uh, the the platform for the the deck here, uh, it, it, it will look cool there, but it will also look fine on the edge where it needs to go. So that was a change that we did today. Although it will be centered on this section right here. On the first floor today, you see we have the makings of a stairway with a handrail and post. Uh, the fir the first floor to the platform, the first platform, uh, we are there. We still have to do some more securing. This is just, remember I told you, uh, everything is fitted into place. Once everything is exactly like it should be, then we'll add the additional bolts, we'll do the additional adhesive gluing, and it'll be nice and tight and firm. Right now it's just a little bit wiggly. It's because we only have one bolt in down here. No adhesive anywhere on this, and not all the bolts for that one there as well. Also, we saw today that inside the hallway, the bookshelf area was looks like almost complete in this area. We just have to do some touch up around here. Uh, maybe this weekend I will be working on doing my patch panel. I don't know what I'm going to do this weekend. I still have to finish up the generator room. And the reason I'm opening up this door, not because anything got done in here today, is because we had a mouse in the laundry room last night. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, so, uh, Ness screamed and I came to the rescue. Uh, so, um, we escorted the little field mouse out of the house. Well, I was going to show you how they were doing each one of the tiny post stamp sized uh, grass mm, sod pieces out here, but uh, they already stopped for the day. Anyway, you see these tiny pieces? Each one of these, every single, those are individual pieces. Uh, not like we do in the US where we have a we roll out. It's like the carpet you roll out carpet and You lay it out there and it's complete you have instant gratification when you do a yard in the US and Probably Canada and probably many other places as well uh, Instantly you have a yard and uh, you don't worry about or you don't really wait so much for everything to start growing together Of course you have the seams and all but after a little bit of time a little bit of rain and you put a little topper soil on top It's very fast and it becomes a nice thick lush uh, yard. Uh, here, um, we'll see. Uh, the, ver the verdict is out right now. 
Uh, they're saying in a few weeks it should start growing. They're saying this is new. Uh, this is new bluegrass, uh, meaning that it, it, they're saying it's going to expand a little bit. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. I, I will trust them, and we'll see in approximately three weeks if that is the case. Uh, give them the benefit of the doubt. And down here on the lanai, the patio, the barbecue pit area on the first floor, we also had the lights installed. I, so I asked my electrician, Noel, please try to get these lights in right here. Sorry about the wind. I know it's, it's really blowing right now. And I asked him to do that so that we could take advantage of this. We can maybe relax a little bit back here on the, uh, the barbecue uh, uh, patio area. Now, once we get all this done and we get the grouting, then it's going to be time for barbecue time. We'll grab the gas and we'll start doing some cookouts here. Uh, but there's also still one thing. I don't know if you know it. There's still one thing that needs to be done back here for the patio. We have a awning that goes across here with a bunch of uh like pergola extensions like in the front of the house you know the accent piece that we have uh in the stairwell at the very top that's going to be done just like that here as well and that will almost conclude once this gets done the grouting and that gets done uh that will almost conclude what needs to be done on the patio and oh one more thing also the the pebble uh, the epo pedal epoxy that's going to go for the fill-in and that will be done approximately uh the time just before the grouting gets done and last but not least, we took delivery of the tempered glass um, for the front door of the house. This is the big piece that goes in the center of the door right here. And then all the ones for the transom that go over the top, they're all sitting back here. Uh, so I imagine those will get installed sometime early next week. Well, that's about it for today. Today was a, a relatively productive day. You see, we did new things today. I always like when we do new things. The stairway, working on a stairway with the post, uh, moving up to the CR on the second floor, the first time in what seems like forever. Uh, fixing that corner inside the master bedroom on that one wall by the breakfast nook. Uh, more of the decking material. Today, the side going down, and then... Uh, <laughs> Where'd you come from? <laughs> you always sneak up on me. Uh, and like, and and fit some finishing work. And uh, oh, I fixed the the most of the uh, LED lighting that goes around the uh, the stonework in the great room. I still have to touch up the very bottom portion. I haven't done that. I'll do that tomorrow morning probably if I get a chance. Uh, in the back back there, you see we still have the sod. Uh, we have lots of sod, but that sod has to go down soon. It cannot sit very long inside those bags because what happens is, sitting in the bags, it becomes uh, a compost, really. Is what, it'll break down inside there, and it'll be wasted. So uh, I think one day, 24 hours is fine. Uh, so they will leave it there, and then back on Monday, they will come back, and they will install the rest of that bluegrass. I think it's going to be beautiful. So anyway, let me close for today. Uh, and thank you very much for all the comments, all the people making suggestions like you normally do on a day-to-day -day basis. What is this noisiness here? <laughs> I, I can't get any peace and quiet around here anymore. So anyway, if you enjoyed today's video, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, please share. And if you have not subscribed, just click on that little My PI Dream heart in the bottom right hand side of your screen. You'll be subscribed and you'll be notified the next time I upload a new video. Oh, and by the way, I shaved. I received my uh, electric shaver uh, in the mail yesterday from Lazada. And uh, I took advantage of it. So uh, I'm sure somebody's going to make a comment about that. Yeah. So anyway, until tomorrow, you have a wonderful and blessed weekend. Bye-bye.